This is Speaker's Corner, and this place has been running for 200 years at least. And the way that this place functions is a claim has to be justified. You cannot just make a claim and walk away. You have to give justification for that claim. And we live in a secular society, a secular society in which they teach us the genesis story of Darwinian evolution, the genesis story of naturalism. Yet, when you want to challenge atheists like him, atheists like him, atheists like them, and you want to challenge them and say to them, justify your belief. They do not have a justification for that belief. And you will not find a single atheist in Speaker's Corner who's willing to justify his religious belief. Why? Because they don't have an argument. Why? Because it is actually a religion. And let me share something with you. We as human beings, we are affected by our social environment. There have been experiments done by Stanford University in the States. And these experiments, they, what they did is they took a class and in this class they had three lines and one line was shorter than the rest and they had a bunch of people sitting there. One of them was the test subject, the rest of the people were actors. And what they did is they asked which is the shortest line and the actors they pointed towards the wrong answer. They said B, B, B and B. And the test subject, who's not an actor, he was sitting there. And they said to him, what is the answer? What did he say? He said B. He denied his own perception because of social conformity, because of social proof. And this is exactly how Darwinists, atheists, these preachers, these so-called prophets of science, this is the way they impact society. They don't have an argument, but they want you to believe because of social truth. Human beings, we have the way, we have the ability to think, we have the ability to speak, we have the ability to hear, we have the ability to reflect, and we have the rational capability to discover truth. And the best explanation of our rational capability is that there is a creator who is greater than us and a creator who is greater than us, who has given us the ability to think and to reflect and uh, the ability to make moral judgments of this is right and this is wrong. Yet the atheists, they don't have this. All they actually have is a social political environment within which their genesis story is taught as a fact. But they don't actually have any evidence for this. And in the Quran, the book of the Muslims, it says, it is God who's given us hearing, sight and minds so that we may reflect but little are we grateful. The saddest thing about the human experience, we don't recognize why we are here. We don't want to ask the question why. Science seeks to answer the question how, which is fine, but that's a different category to why. Why do you exist is a different question. A hundred years ago, a hundred years ago approximately, Lenin, the dictator from Russia, he came to this park and he spoke to people and he had a large crowd in Speaker's Corner. Yes, Lenin, he came to Speaker's Corner with a large crowd of people. We had the Bolsheviks right here and yet a hundred years from that point that Vladimir Lenin spoke, USSR is destroyed. Communism is gone and all those people are dead, except this guy. He's the only communist left in Speaker's Corner. Why is that? It's not a good idea. The reason why is because any ideology 
any way of thinking which is man-made will not survive which the is what exactly what all the religions are man-made the difference is this you had your ussr you had a communist state where you taught people materialism where you taught people atheism yeah where are you today we are right here you're the only one left in speaker's corner where are all the bolsheviks they're all gone where is your empire it's gone what does it go to show you it shows you secular ideologies which come from the mind will not survive the test of time because of capitalism exactly so that's the point you will always have you will always have the beginning and the end of empires but one thing that will not end one thing that will not end and it is a promise of god that will not end in the quran god says it is he who has sent his messenger with guidance in the religion of truth so that it may manifest over all systems in the quran god says that he sent islam and he sent the prophet muhammad why for a particular purpose so that that system it overrides every single system in the world this is a prophecy which 1400 years ago was uttered uttered by the mouth of the greatest man that ever lived you will not find you will not find it i dare anyone here to find a man in history who is more recognized more followed who has more inspiration whose teachings are more widespread whose influence is greater than muhammad ibn abdullah yes, and yes. prophet muhammad peace be upon him not lenin not stalin not newton not lamarck not darwin none of these people the greatest man to ever live was the prophet muhammad and if anybody here has a rational argument to counter that i want to hear it I want to hear it. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he came with a teaching. His teaching was love for others, what you love for yourself. Love for others, what you love for yourself. What teaching did Darwin come up with? What teaching did Darwin come up with? What I want to show you. This is a five pound note. This is a five pound note. On this note, we have a picture of Winston Churchill. And if you pick up the ten pound note, you have a picture of Darwin. And what we know from these two characters, these two characters were linked. What were they linked by? They were linked by the British Empire. The British Empire. And what was the justification, the moral justification of the British Empire? It was the survival of the fittest. Yet, human beings, we do not live by the survival of the fittest. If you walk just straight down there, you will find a hospital. A hospital that is there to care for people. That is there to try to help people. This hospital is not based upon the principle of survival of the fittest. This is based upon the survival of the unfittest. And guess who's paying for it? We all are paying for it through our tax. And what does it go to show you? It goes to show you fundamentally human beings do not only look out for themselves. They care about others. It's not about the selfish gene. It's not about the survival of the fittest. It is about being good to each other. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he came with one teaching. He said, I have come only, only to perfect manners. Now, when you think about that, initially, it doesn't make any sense. I have come only to perfect manners. What he was referring to is this. If, my friend, what's your name? Your name? 
Dave, Dave, I'm going to give you a billion dollars only on one condition. You take those billion dollars and they're yours. You can buy the cars you want. You can buy whatever you want. But, I can see she's happy. But, I only have one condition, my friend. All human beings will disappear except you. Would you accept that offer? Why? Why not? Absolutely, you can create a lot more. What do I need money for? If I'm not going to give it to Thank you. You can create a lot more. What will beings. you do with all that money if you have no one to share it with? It goes to show you the quality of our life is not based upon wealth. The quality of our life is based upon relationships with other human beings. And the Prophet Muhammad said, I have come only to perfect manners. Meaning what? He didn't say to teach you manners, because all human beings have a level of manners. To perfect manners. Human beings, according to Islam, are fundamentally good. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught every human being is born in a natural state. He is born in a natural state. And in that natural state, he is good. Therefore, in Islam, 500 years ago, if I accused you of being a witch, you would have to prove you're not a witch. Guilty before, yeah, you're guilty before being proven innocent. That is what they had the law in this country 500 years ago in Europe. Yet the Prophet Muhammad 1400 years ago, he came with a different law, the presumption of innocence. Every human being is innocent until they're proven guilty. Why? Because fundamentally we are good. And the Prophet came to teach us how to get fit better. And what he came with is this. Love for others what you love for yourself. He didn't say love for other Muslims what you love for yourself. Love for others what you love for, your love, or for yourself. Love for the Eskimos. Love for the Africans. Love for the Latinos. Love for the Americans. Love for the British. Love for others what you love for yourself. Yet, the people that we have, which teach us survival of the fittest, this is a selfish behavior and a behavior that's not in line with human beings. And since the quality of our life is based upon the quality of our relationships, there is one relationship which is missing within our lives. And that is the relationship with the one who was with you when you were in your womb and the one who will be with you when you will be in your tomb. The one that was with you for nine months in your mother's stomach and the one that will be with you for hundreds of years when you're going to be in your tomb grave. And that is the creator. And the quality of your life is dependent upon your relationship with that creator. All human beings alive today, we are in awe when we see something. Just a few weeks ago, I bought an iPhone 7. I was so happy. I was so happy. I thought this was amazing. Just within two, three days, I thought, it's just another phone. What's the difference? What's the difference? Human beings, we will be never be happy with material wealth. It's a temporary happiness. But we are impressed by technology, are we not? We are impressed when we see robotics, are we not? We praise the football player when he does a free kick from 10 meters away and it goes in the goal. We are impressed by these skills. Yet, we are not impressed by the one who has created everything. The one who has created the birds in the sky, the turtles in the sea, who has given us the ability to see and hear and reflect and as conscious beings make choices. We are impressed by little feats of technology. Yet the Creator has given us the greatest design within nature. And this greatest design within nature should put us in awe of God. It should put us in awe of God. And we should think to ourselves, if we are impressed by other human beings and their achievements, why shouldn't we be impressed by the one who created them? God says in the Quran, 
I created you and your actions, meaning everything a human being can achieve in his life is only by the, the ability which God has put within him. So what we should do as human beings, we should go back to our basic state, our basic natural belief, which is that there is a creator. And this creator is the only one worthy of worship. We have many masters in society. Why am I dressed like this? Why am I not wearing a poncho like the Mexicans do? Because I grew up in this society. Why is it that you are dressed the way you are? Because of society. Why am I talking English and not Japanese? Because we are from this society. We are impacted by our social environment. But there is one part of our nature of all human beings which is a common denominator and that common denominator is we want to connect to something higher and greater than us. It is a part of a human nature that we want to connect to something greater and that great thing is God and connection to God would lead to happiness in our lives. That is my message today. And that is what I'm hoping to convey. Everything good I have said is from God and every mistake is from myself. If you have any questions, you can ask me them later. My voice is going. Thank you very much for listening.